2020 was going to be a great year for me as an independent artist. Singer Will Daly, with six full-length albums and seven Boston Music Awards under his belt, was all set for a tour of China. Then came the virus. So I went from having a year planned out and doing pretty well as an independent artist to to nothing, to, to my shower, an isolation tour. You heard right. Daly's ended up in his shower stall. It started with a GoFundMe campaign for the newly unemployed bartenders at one of his favorite clubs, Great Scott in Alston. Daly sang songs from his shower over Facebook and Instagram, and the response blew him away. And then it just turned into this thing. There'll be a cure for pain. A stream of shower shows have followed. Daly labeled it the Isolation Tour, all to raise money for the newly unemployed support staff at music clubs around town. I didn't know where it was going to go, but all of a sudden we were doing about 10 shows and uh, each show was a different venue. And at the end, we raised over $18,000. Got both hands dirty in my dreams. Next up, leg two of the isolation tour, streamed nightly, this time to help out of work musicians. So I just tried to treat it like I would any other tour I'm doing uh, and I've done for years. Although you're in the shower stall. <laughs> I'm in the shower, but the shower does sound nice. Is there always whiskey in the shower with you too? <laughs> <laughs> no, just on this tour. <laughs> so late. Social distancing may be the term of the year, vital to flattening the curve and stopping the spread of coronavirus. But social distancing doesn't mean a musician can't connect, especially if they're willing to make home deliveries. If you live in Watertown, you stand a fair chance of encountering random acts of tuba. I thought I would try to hit every street in Watertown, um, but there are a lot of them. Zachariah Hickman, a fixture on the Boston music scene for years. In March, he was headed off on tour, playing bass with his longtime musical partner, singer Josh Ritter. When this all happened, I, I was six hours into a three-month tour. They were all set up on stage in New York when the entire tour was canceled before they could play a single note, shut down by the pandemic response. It's very disappointed and I kind of licked my wounds for a couple of days before I decided I was time to snap out of it and do something else. You could say he was put out on the street. This multi-instrumentalist went out one day to serenade his neighbors. And I ended up walking around for about two hours, a couple miles, just playing the horn and I just had such a positive response. Not positive for me as much as um, it just seemed like a lot of people were really lonely and um, felt moved by that. Hickman's one-man parade takes place every day, rain or shine. Obviously not everyone in the world probably wants a mid-afternoon uh, tuba serenade but hopefully it's for the greater good. My thinking really is if you're at home with two young kids all day, you probably run out of stuff, exciting variables to add. Tuba guy comes around the corner, that's pretty entertaining, at least for a few minutes. Thank you so much, like, totally lifts everyone's spirits up. Thank you so much. I'm genuinely surprised at how moving it's been for me uh, personally. My skills are performance and crowd based. And you take performances and crowds away, and it feels like I don't have that much to offer. This makes me feel like I'm doing something that matters. In a small way, but it matters. A little bit of mischief, you know, it goes a long way.
Fenway Park organist Josh Cantor live streamed the sound of Fenway to the wider world on Facebook and Instagram. It's not just the clubs and concert halls that have gone quiet. With Major League Baseball postponed, Fenway Park organist Josh Cantor suddenly had lots of time on his hands. I truly love it, and I can't do it right now. But on what was supposed to be opening day, Cantor couldn't stop himself. He set up an iPhone in his Cambridge living room and live streamed the sound of Fenway to the wider world on Facebook and Instagram. Hooray, we did it. We have been very surprised. It was really unexpected. In deference to social distancing, we speak to Josh from his living room window. And then all of a sudden we started getting calls and messages from all over the world, from people who are watching it and from media outlets who wanted to talk to us. Indeed, Cantor's daily half-hour Fenway feed, called the seventh inning stretch, has been profiled by the Washington Post, ESPN, and CNN. Uh, if you play something by Elton John for my husband and me, he's listening while on his lunch break. Elton John is listening to this right now? Cantor's ear is legendary. A busy sideman who's played with members of REM, Blondie, and countless local bands, Cantor specializes in on-the-spot requests and a playful touch of humor. Elton John is watching our show. He is on a lunch break just like every average Joe. Ably assisted by his wife and occasional co-host, the Reverend Producer Mary. Hi everybody! Welcome to the seventh inning stretch. She feeds Josh post-it note requests from the internet when she's not in her bear paws. Look how warm they are. Oh, I love them so much. And the requests come from well beyond the 617. Somebody from South Korea sets her alarm for 4 a.m. every day so that she can get up and watch it live, and I, that just blew me away. Got a built-in mullet. Call it the Johnny Damon hat. But it's not all fun and games. Listeners are encouraged to contribute to their local food banks. You know, we weren't seeking a spotlight, but as far as being an opportunity to bring people together at this time and to um, raise money for food banks, we're all for it. Actual food deliveries are part of the package with our next music maker. 100% goes towards buying of all this stuff. Yeah. DJ Cisco, one of Boston's top DJs, was all set for the year ahead. It was 90% full seven days a week. Then COVID-19 cleared his calendar. Overnight, nothing. <laughs> so it was pretty scary. Five, four, three, two, one. It's DJ 
Cisco, baby. My God, oh my God, God, let's go. But DJ Cisco wasn't ready to call it a night. We all have some fun, baby. Let's go. One, two, three. The party still rages on Cisco's Instagram page. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hundreds join Cisco every Friday night for Club BRK, a live party streamed from his home studio. You have to keep the creative juices going. You have to innovate. You have to reinvent yourself for the times that we're in right now. Salud, salud. DJ Cisco asked if his party people could pony up to help local families in need. When I saw two dollars come in, I was like, "Wow, this is kind of cool." Then I saw five dollars come in, and then I saw you know ten bucks, and you know some people would send twenty bucks, and it just it, it amounted to a little chunk of change, and it really helped out. Cisco and his BRK crew helped out twenty families in the Salem Lynn area their first week. From the bottom of my little taco, taco little shape heart right here, man. You guys stepped up to the plate, right? For the bread. Now, DJ Cisco and his team are buying groceries for 40 families a week. Hey, 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 come on, come on. Partying with a purpose during these strange times. It's weird, it's scary, but if I can give a little bit of hope through music and, I, you know, a little bit of uh, positive side, positive spin to this, I'm gonna do my best I can.